So I'm just going to get myself uh, in the canoe. I've got everything down by the water and uh, I'm just kind of looking over what today is going to look like. I wasn't sure where I was going to camp today, uh, but given the conditions, I decided I was going to go into uh, maybe as far as Linda Lake. I'm putting in at Source Lake. Um, the temperature today is supposed to be six degrees, a low tonight of minus three, um, mix of rain and flurries. Sounds spectacular. <laughs> this is going to make up for the wonderful weather I had uh, on my September trip, but um, uh, the wind is what's really got me concerned. It's about 30k today, and uh, I really didn't want to get out. I was thinking of going to Penn Lake, and I thought, then I have to cross Rock Lake. And my experience on Rock is it can be really nasty if there's a lot of wind. So I kind of thought, I'm going to stay off any of the larger lakes and uh, just head across some smaller ones. But it means i got to do a lot of portaging on this. So um, I've got uh, a first portage of 540 uh, meters into Bruce Lake, uh, followed by 920 into Raven. And then there's... Um, another 430 into Owl Lake before I do my 1360 into Linda Lake. So uh, if if I'm exhausted and cold and I don't care anymore, I might just park it on Owl Lake and skip that last long portage. There's lots of campsites available, so I don't think I'm going to have a problem with that. Time to have a little something to eat and then I'm on the water. Woo. Well, it is... Uh, 30 kilometer hour winds today, but uh, wind gusts of 40k. <laughs> and I'm telling you, crossing the open water from the uh, access point uh, up until the small bay where the portage is, wow, that was something I had freezing, pelting, snow rain coming down a, on me with these gusting winds. So that was a heck of a paddle. I'm glad I've finished that, and I'm glad it's just a small little lake. Well, I just ran into two young guys that were uh, leaving from Raven Lake. Uh, they uh, gave me an idea of where I could camp, a really nice campsite if I wanted to uh, park my butt there. And uh, they're heading into Little Lake, so I think they've got quite a long journey to get there today. But it was unusual, you know, no matter how bad the weather is, I'm going to run into somebody at some point. Uh, but they didn't see anybody out here. They were only out overnight for the one night, and uh, they said they didn't see anybody. Um, I doubt it's unlikely that I'll uh, see anybody else the rest of my trip. But I've got one quick lake to get across now, and next portage. Here I come. Every trip I seem to learn something. I pulled a real boner today. So I got to this campsite and I was setting up and I was hanging my bear bag and I always go and I look for a really good rock that I can put in my throw bag to throw the line over a tree limb. And I could not find rock. It's Algonquin Park. Do you think I could find a rock for this bag. Anyway, finally I just gave up and I decided, well, I must have something in my gear that's heavy enough. So I used my stove, my Whisper Light stove. It was in its little capsule package. It was protected. So I threw it over the tree branch and it got stuck up in the tree. Yeah, not a good idea. <laughs> Anyway, I did manage to finally find a rock through the other end of the rope up in the uh, tree and managed to pull the whole thing down from the other side. So fortunately, I got my stove back, which is a really, really good thing. Lesson learned. I think I'll just stay in bed and read this morning. That does not look promising. When I see snow on the ground, yeah. No desire to get up. <sighs> uh, <sighs> I have enough warm clothing. Big steamy pot of hot chocolate. 
Made a double batch. Gonna drink the whole thing right out of the pot. Mm-mm. Just keeping warm. Can you hear it? It's not rain on the tarp. It's little pellets of snow. Called for flurries today with wind gusts up to 40 kilometers. Yep, weatherman was accurate. But I am nice and cozy under my tarp. I'm going to drink a big batch of hot chocolate and read my book. Today I'm not doing anything or going anywhere. So uh, if it had been nicer, I probably would have ventured out, but uh, it's so cold, I'm just going to stay in camp and keep warm. Well, I got my canoe back last week, and uh, she's in great shape. They did a great job fixing her, and at the same time, I had some skid plates installed. And uh, the goal of this is to reduce... Uh, any uh, more wear and tear on uh, the uh, hull of the canoe because I am often getting bashed against rocks uh, or riding up on rocks unintentionally. That's the one thing about uh, not being able to see when you're in a sit position, sit on the floor position in a canoe. Um, you can't really see what's ahead of you and I have just come in hard on top of low flat rocks uh, under the water surface before. Uh, so I've taken quite a bit of a uh, chunk out of the uh, finish, the uh, um, champagne finish on the bottom, front and back because of that. Uh, but also just getting in and out of the canoe uh, on really bad uh, days, really bad weather conditions, a lot of waves and the canoe's getting bashed against the rocks while you're trying to get loaded and get in. Really takes a, a beating. I didn't do this when I originally bought the canoe because I had been doing a lot of research, reading a lot of what other people had to say, and I saw a lot of comments like, oh, all they are leaf con collectors. And I thought, well, I don't want anyone looking at me on the lake going, look at that lady with the leaf collectors on her canoe. Um, but now I'm like, I don't care what anybody says. Um, uh, I've had other people tell me recently, uh, Dave Johnson, uh, that uh, it will uh, be something I don't regret and uh, it'll certainly save the hull of the canoe. So we're going to see. I haven't really, it does add weight. I think it's about a pound or so and uh, I haven't really noticed any difference picking it up and carrying it. But, you know, I do try and shave as much weight as possible and that was one of the reasons why I didn't go with them in the first place. But uh, yeah, we're going to, we're going to carry on with these and hope that they make a really substantial difference to the lifetime of the canoe. Good morning. Well, I'm ready to get going. I've got everything packed up and down at the water with the exception of the canoe. I'm going to grab that in a second. Just wanted to quickly show you the campsite I was on. Absolutely fabulous campsite on Owl Lake. There are three campsites. One is uh, next to the portage and then two of them are side by side here down a little small channel uh, about halfway down the lake. Uh, this is an absolutely spectacular campsite. If you've got a big party particularly, it would be phenomenal. Uh, it's got a nice little cook section here which you can see. Uh, I like the way that they use the trees <laughs> and slam the rock in. Makes for a nice little granite countertop surface to, to work at. Uh, the put in into the water is lovely. It's just nice flat shallow rock uh, so you can get in and out of the water easily. Uh, the only thing I would say negative about this campsite is the fire pit is very, very small and it's very close to the uh, put in to the water. Uh, it would have been nicer had they set it back a little bit further, but um, it does give you a little bit more of a view when you're sitting down here. Um, but the, the site itself is absolutely enormous, uh, beautiful, uh, covered in pine needles, absolutely stellar. Uh, lots of tenting areas. I was uh, 
way behind the trees back there in a tenting area. There's another tenting area way over there behind the trees, uh, and you can tent all the way along here too. And then the uh, Thunderbox is up the hill a ways, way back in the trees, nicely private, nobody's going to disturb you back there. So really, if you're down on Owl Lake, check out this campsite, you won't be disappointed. Very different camping in the fall, walking along the portages. In, uh, in the summer months, you'll hear lots of little animals moving about and uh, birds singing, chirping away. But in the fall, there's not a sound, just the crunch of leaves under your feet. So I came back to get my canoe, and as I was getting ready to pick it up, I saw in the water this little guy kind of dived in. I don't know what happened, but he ended up in the water and could not get himself out. And uh, I went running around to see if I could find something to paddle my canoe, because I don't have my paddle, it's at the other end of the portage grabbed a couple sticks and made way to try and get him out of the water but unfortunately too late. I've been trying what I could to get him resuscitated but I just didn't make it out fast enough. Poor little guy. That is so unfortunate right in front of me. Mother Nature. Well, if you had have seen me using two sticks like this to try and paddle out into the water to save this poor little bird, the one fell apart in my hand, so I ended up using my hand, but uh, alas, right in front of me, I saw him flapping around and flapping, and I just didn't get out to him in time. I would assume he must have been sick. I'm going to bury him in the woods. So I'm on my final portage of the day. It's just over 500 meters. And uh, I was just getting into it and uh, noticed some fishing line kind of strung out on the portage trail. It was kind of back and forth on some uh, small shrubs. And uh, so I gathered it up thinking not to leave it there because it's a uh, trip hazard for, for other people as well as, you know, a hazard to wildlife too. And uh, took another 20 paces and came across a whole bunch more and ended up following the trail of it back into the woods about 300 feet before I managed to pull it all out and literally I was pulling it watching it come out from the bush further in I gathered all this fishing line up um, so I would imagine some animal got caught up in it and went careening through the bushes uh, Hopefully it got away without any serious injury, but uh, just a lesson to watch uh, what we're leaving behind and to make sure we're gathering our fishing line up whenever we can. Well, it's 2.30 and uh, I'm at Source Lake, just going to cross the lake and head to the parking lot now. Uh, today's weather's been actually really, really nice, uh, albeit it's quite overcast. Um, it was calling for possible flurries or showers today, uh, about 30% chance, uh, but only saw a little tiny bit of drizzle. Other than that, it was uh, pretty clear all day. And uh, thankfully, no wind. And really, wind is the biggest nemesis of all. So uh, it's just lovely to be heading out on a glass lake uh, on my final paddle to the car. Um, I didn't think I was going to see anybody on this trip or hardly anybody. I actually saw two guys leaving from what I believe was Linda Lake or maybe they were further on than that. But I saw them about, uh, I think it was around nine, just a little after nine this morning. Uh, so they were paddling through uh, Owl Lake, got out ahead of me. Um, I saw on the portage um, to Bruce Lake when I was putting in at Bruce, I saw on the other side guys putting in at Bruce that took the first campsite. Well, I think there's only one campsite at Bruce. So I saw, saw them today also. And then while I was out here, there were 
two other guys that were camped together out on um, Owl Lake that were right across from me, <laughs> um, but we more or less ignored each other and gave each other complete peace and quiet. They were very quiet. I was very quiet. What's really um, surprising at this time of year, you just don't hear anything. Even people are a lot quieter. Normally you hear guys laughing and talking. Everybody's very, very quiet. Um, absolutely peaceful. So even though I did see and run into a few people, um, really it was a very quiet couple days.